What's up, YouTube? Eugene here, and I'm joined by my fellow fragrance friend, Daniel. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> um, so we've got Arige Lador's newest collection here, uh, sent to us by Rush and Adam. Thank you so much. Are you familiar with Arige Lador? Have, have you smelled it? Well, as an enthusiast, you're in for a okay, treat. So I'm excited too. Like I, I've heard of the line. I've seen the bottles. Um, I've, I've done a little skim reading, and I'm excited to smell them. Um, and maybe for the best, I really don't know anything about. I, like I don't know what the collection is that we're getting, what the samples are. Um, but yeah, I, I, from my understanding, I think they use a lot of natural ingredients, um, and it's supposed to be just excellent quality. And yeah, well, they're very rich. They're very bold. Uh, you know, pretty well composed for artisanal brand. And I know Russian Adam is really inspired by uh, fine French perfume. We've kind of had a, a discussion, and he loves, you know, the French style. So he tries to incorporate that with his oud compositions. So there is the packaging, kind of this velvety yeah, nice. texture. Yeah, looks good. And there are uh, one, two, three, four, five pieces in here. Are these they're sprays? Oh, they're sprays. I was expecting okay. dabs, which I really appreciate the sprays. Yeah, and I think great. these artisanals, these oud things, are meant to be dabbed, but I think that's how they wear them. Yeah, I find fragrances actually wear a bit differently, if depending on if you dab them or spray them. So I know some people like to, they'll put like um, dabber samples into spray bottles and vice versa. I, I do find generally when you dab, it's like a lower projection. It just doesn't spread as much and then it doesn't evaporate as much. All right. Um, so yeah, the, these actually may do better as sprayers because you can they'll kind of open up. So I guess we'll, we'll get a better sense of them from there. So we've got we've got five of them here: agar de noir, musk. Is that Lave, lave, I don't know if yeah, that's French. Lave, yeah, I guess so. Um, Queer de Russi, Gardenia, and Santal Galore. So you want to pick one? Sure. And uh, uh, I don't know if you should put them on uh, blotter or skin. Uh, we've got five. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty... I'm not wearing anything. I'm not we wearing anything stuff on either. And I'm not going anywhere. So. Let's do skin. Yeah, let, let's give it a shot. I've got at least two or four spots so let's so let's this see. is agar de noir and that's it looks quite dark well actually yeah, they are dark I mean, the juice is definitely yeah that's that's dark and that's really <laughs> spicy oh yeah i can smell from here oh, yeah. woody and dry almost i almost feel like a paper texture like papyrus or something throw some on very dry yeah. and dusty oh yeah um, Incense -y. Yeah, I get like um also oh like a honeyed um kind of oh okay. Uh I did not press hard enough so it just dripped. And yeah, it's dark. You can see it there. I think uh yeah, you can see how dark that is. Wow. So I'm I'm assuming agar is agar wood. Yeah. Top notes, a vintage spice tincture of cardamom. Oh yeah. Amica, calamus. Okay, so I'm definitely getting, yeah, like, um, I wouldn't even say dry spices necessarily, but yeah, it's, it's very um, dry. I get, and I get like a um, honeyed, waxy, um, there's a certain bitter spice in there too, um, but yeah, definitely rich, thick, deep spices. So the heart is oud from Laos, uh, Laos, Laos yeah, and yeah. India, uh, vintage. Arabia and Violet Accords. So I haven't smelled a lot of natural perfumes. Saffron, coffee, ambergris. Yeah, in my, in my experience though, when you smell the naturals, they definitely smell raw and rich. You, 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 can, you can smell like the thousand ingredients in there. Mm. It's, not, it's not the same as just like the reconstructions. You can smell when it's natural. And so to me, at least this, this smells natural. It smells like there's a certain thickness and richness that you generally just don't get from right. from like reconstructions. Yeah, you can you can see you can it's got this depth to it. Yeah, I think I think there's like a, a certain richness that like you want to keep smelling it. It's sort of like it has this um, warmth and glow about it that's like 
this cloud, but yeah, there's also some also some funk in here. I'm getting like a bitter something's developing that feels almost like a bitter wood. I don't really find anything funky or dirty to it. To me, this is um, it's wearable. Yeah, no, it's, I don't mean sorry, I don't mean dirty in that it's like um like animalic, but more just like um like like wood chips and shavings and like mulch and like mm. the forest floor earthiness. and it's like yeah an earthiness like a, a I can definitely see that to me I I think paper like I see paper like the paper fibers yeah almost like a, like an old book cover you know or something like that yeah um good uh rich thick spices do you like it um, yeah, I do, and, and I suspect because these are fairly complex creations, that like this will go somewhere. That this may become oud. Right. But my hunch is going to. I don't get oud right off. Yeah, I'm not. Right. I'm not sort of sensing that off the bat. Okay, let's let's hit another one. And also keep in mind that like oud is, and not just because of the pairings of the directions that oud goes, but the source of the oud is very different. Like you can get. The smell of bakur, like the burning wood chips. Right. You can get the smell of the wood itself. You can get the smell of the trees, and then you'll get like Laotian oud, and you'll get Indian oud, and you get Cambodian oud, and they all smell quite different as well. So, like, if he says this is Laotian oud, then this will be when this gets to yeah, the oud Laos, part. Laos, Laos, and yeah, India. It, it's gonna. Yeah, and so I think I think Indian oud is meant to be a little kind of like dirty and funky, and then Laotian oud, uh, which I have a bot, I have a perfume that says they have real loot in it that's meant to be lotion seems more um animalic so well, this you know, seems more like it's heading towards uh smoked chips than anything medicinal or yeah 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 i don't get anything animalic or anything like that it's very... okay so this is musk lave yeah lav i'm not sure let's see yeah. three might be a bit too much <laughs> This is more floral to me, mm. and almost metallic. Yeah. So I remember in this um, in this like perfume, um, the, the scent of memory video or something like that, uh, the BBC documentary, they were saying how like sometimes a perfumer has to make a composition where the opening is almost bad to let it unfold, but the consumer has to be. Um, knowledgeable oh, enough to be to, yeah to, to live past, to get past that yeah. whereas what in the modern a lot of the modern perfumes they spend all the money on the top notes and they make these like really beautiful nice citruses and then the whole thing falls apart three yeah. hours later whereas in the like classics they know that you're going to spend the whole day with yeah. the thing and they're willing to have a bit of a rough opening to let it open somewhere so I almost like get that impression with this which is like I'm not sure if that opening is where this is going to go but it's almost like a necessary evil to like let it unfold yeah, and then I, it'll tell its proper story but it's like a bit of a rough opening I definitely know what you mean and I've witnessed that before but I get a lot of reflections of light to this like it's very sparkly I get citruses. I almost get a bit of like an indolicky jasmine. I'm getting, I'm getting like a slight florally citrus kind of thing. But it is actually a, it's a heavy, rich perfume. But um, immortel. I'm getting like a sweet, sticky. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely syrupy. getting a sweet, syrupy. Yeah, a sticky. I think like that immortel kind of thing, a resinous, sticky, syrupy. All right. So let let me read the notes. So you got bergamot and lavender. Uh, lavender absolute, osmanthus. Aged Mysore sandalwood and natural wild so Siberian deer musk. Okay. So I don't get anything to me that resembles or what I'm familiar with as deer musk. Yeah, no, I know civet like, and like castorum. Yeah. I, I know those two pretty well, like between like jiki and those kind of things, but I don't know. To me, deer musk, deer musk is yeah. like an intense, animalic, sweaty musk. Yeah, I'm getting a bit of... So, again, we were talking about, like, Uranus, but, like, that, like, dry, sweaty, sweet kind of Uranus smell, which I think is a bit like you the Immortel. You get that from this? Yeah, but a bit, like, more like the Immortel side, meaning it's it's sticky and sweet and resinous. I definitely get that. But I don't know if that is meant to be deer musk. But but so far, um, it's not there yet. Base note, Iris Accord, uh, Iris Accord Oak Moss, and Labdanum. Hmm. Okay, labdanum can be kind of resinous as well. 
And again, keep. I think these are. It's tough to tell just exactly first impressions. I think. I think these are going to develop. You know, over the hours. But yeah, my first impression at least is that they're they're pretty rich, complex things. They they they're taking time to open. Even the other one, the first one you sprayed, has changed already. Yeah, it's much more earthier. Yeah, and I think I get that some like coffee texture from it. Yeah, it was spicier in the beginning. It's that's that's changed. All right, queer to receipt, and I'm like right away. I'm excited for this because I've got that association to Chanel or other vintage leathers. Um, I'm almost scared to spray this on, you know, because I have so my my expectations are so high for this. I'll let you go first. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Okay. Um, oh, I like the sound yeah. of that. Um, it almost smells um, inky. I, I think, like, like I'm getting floral, but ink of some sort. Yeah, like, this to me is more musky than the musk lave. Like, I yeah. get musk from this right off the top mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, more than I do anything that's leathery. It. This is so far the dirtiest of the three that yeah. we've tried yeah there's a uh, I'm there's definitely some dry incense in here and, and i get is... again i feel like it's indolic but i'm not sure but there's some kind of weird texture i don't know how to describe it like i just i smelled like purple calligraphy ink i don't know why it just it smelled like um byrito has that fragrance um m ink uh, it's mm ink and it's um, it's got this um, molecule in it that's like a synthetic that is supposed to smell like um, ink, but it's also used as a synthetic musk. I get indols like uh, indolic florals from this. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting more of that now. Almost like composted florals. Yeah. Like very damp, wet, dewy. Like if you threw a bunch of florals into a plastic bag and let them sit in the sun for yeah three or four days it's like the end of the day at the flower show and there's like the boggy water and the flowers that are like but it's dying. also got this vintage appeal to it like you know 1920s yeah. 1930s yeah this feels like an old classic fragrance and not dated but just an old style of fragrance there, there's something that's like old funky french perfume but it doesn't remind me of anything either no no me neither a little bit of something honeyed in here. The first one definitely feels ambery to me. Maybe some um, civet. So let's let's look at the notes. Yeah, I definitely crude guess. birch tar. I, Antique violet. You know what? I I felt like I was smelling some violet. Mm. Violet tar, blue lotus accord, rose jasmine. To me, violet is most prominent from those florals. Yeah, and I get jasmine. I, I, get, I get jasmine, too. Yeah, it's weird because it's such a dark perfume, but there's something like a soapy floral thing, but and yet it's quite dark as well. All or, right. Or rich. So the base notes, beaver tail oil, natural wild Siberian deer musk, and amber accord. Hmm. I definitely get the musk... Like, it's some kind of musk. He says Siberian deer musk. To me, that was the first thing that hit me was wild musk. Mm. And he also claims uh, beaver tail oil. I don't know what that is, but... That could, could be like castorum. a... Yeah, castorum. A castorum is, is, um, is, is from beavers. So um, I, I'm, I don't know if it's from the tail, but that would make sense. Now, I'm smelling the first one, and I get um, Amber Absolute. I get an amber that's smoldering and rich and spices. I get a lot of texture from it. But I get honeyed as well. But it's so dry and papery. Do you see paper? I, I got that Almost like a, a, like a, a paper mill, yeah. you know? It's yeah. just got that pulpiness. But I get like an ambery, like like a like a roasted fire crackling. Not not the smell, but the feeling that it's like dry spices that are crackling and popping and 
And yeah, I get. I mean, to me, it, it smells something like that uh, Exidolo Rider or uh, or um, Amber Absolute from Tom mm. Ford. I, I, I'm getting a spicy amber. I get the amber but, too, but it doesn't remind me of any other. It's dark. It's colored my skin. Like it's actually left a mark. And the other one, yeah. The other one's very Still. clean to me. The musk lave. It's very clean and uh, it's got. The second one. I almost feel like there's some geranium in here. Yeah, the second one. I'm still getting honey. I'm getting. I'm still getting that thick um, immortel richness. Does it smell different? Like. It almost feels more syrupy on you. Yeah, and, and and like just not to turn into a whole discussion about like skin chemistry, but I think when you actually are dealing with naturals, like I think the skin chemistry thing is is. In my experience, I've smelled a lot of fragrance on a lot of people, and generally what I find is there are certain people who have tricky skin, and then things smell unusual on them, but most of the fragrances have generally been designed to smell fine on those people, and they test it that way. So, But there are certain people who have tricky skin. However, natural ingredients, which I think these actually are, do tend to really play with skin chemistry. So I think the idea of like skin chemistry doesn't actually apply to most perfumery, unless it's this kind of stuff where mm. it can really actually change you know um, the musk doesn't smell musky to me at all like it doesn't smell dirt like what i would expect from the things that i'm familiar with from this brand yeah like the richness the 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 dirtiness the depth i don't get like this i would never say that this is like an arige at least yeah from the things that i'm familiar with it doesn't smell like musk yeah, so I'm not getting that impression either. Um, I wonder Let if these see, bergamot, have been... lavender, lavender absolute, osmanthus. But there's oh Siberian deer musk. See, I get like yeah. no hint of. I get more, way more musk in in the Queer de Russe than in this. Yeah, I, I wonder if they'll just if it'll, it'll develop in the dry down. But right so now, so far I really like the Queer de Russe. Yeah, although take away the name and just smell the fragrance i wouldn't call this greater receipt as in if i smell this i'd say it's a nice like indolic soapy floral with some base but i don't floral. smell it's more anything. floral than it is leathery I like anything leathery. i don't get birch yeah yeah and i'm averse to birch tar like i when i smell it i'm very sensitive to it so i notice it right away i get none of that here meaning again you know it's funny it's a very green it almost it, it feels like a classic masculine green fragrance to me yeah, it feels like it's turning. I was gonna say it's like feminine, this is but French. It's, it's, this yeah. to me smells French. Yeah, totally does. Uh, it's it's with nice a lot of depth. Small. Yeah, but I don't know why it's called Queer de Russie. Maybe the leather will show yeah. up. Like yeah, for me, will. like Chanel's Queer de Russie, it took me forever oh. to get the leather, the like queer. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't oh, get oh, it so right that's, away. That's straight up like. But like now leather. to me, it's like leather polished boots. Yeah, yeah. I always got like a like a smoking lady in a fur coat kind of uh, smell there's uh, it's very animalic like yeah. i get that musk and and more there's like civet and something else going on it's more than just musk yeah my my, ex my experience with castorum at least is is that it, i always thought it was sort of creamy and fatty it's like beeswax you know? or something else yeah. animalic this almost reminds me um do you know Antaeus has that beeswax yes yes that kind of like i don't know if it's fougere per se but it's like it's like masculine beeswax kind of idea and there's violet and there's jasmine and all that but there's something about that waxiness that i, that I get i really this. like that yeah i can see why that's that's totally not my cup of tea i don't i don't really know not my thing i don't like it i like the first one but but I, I i think i get what it is although i don't get the name but i get what it is all right so let's we've... all of these so far have been good like i enjoy have enjoyed smelling them yeah i think i would enjoy smelling these on me and i would keep smelling them queer to Russi is the most interesting for me by yeah. far this second one reminds me a bit of a slumber house because there's a certain like thick richness to slumber house fragrances that this second one kind of reminds me of um okay and i like the first i'm one. not feeling the musk the second like one. i'm not feeling it at all i don't know where it's going i, I just think it's not yeah, I'm not excited. I, the first one I want to keep smelling. I love me. the Queer de Russie. I like 
What was the first one? Uh, was uh, Agar or something? Agar Noir. It's yeah. like, I yeah. like it. And again, I'm not sure it's Agar, but it smells okay, like let's a... let's Gardenia. Yeah. So I'm just going to smell this on you because if I'm not mistaken, I hate Gardenia. <laughs> I don't like tuberose. I don't really like green. Like, I like vetiver, say, but I don't really like tuberose. Uh, like, oh, cardinal flower. It was like... I appreciate what it is, but like when I smell it, it's I just hate the smell. But I, I love florals. Yeah. So and and particularly and and actually also gardenia, from what I understand, is very difficult to do. This is very mentholated. Yeah. I'm without getting, being minty. I'm definitely getting like a lemony. Um, yeah. I'm. Yeah. It's fresh, but not minty. It's smooth. It's, it's effervescent. It's it's like it's um. It has a sparkle, and I'm but getting it's like a lemon. It's not white floral either. No, no. It's it, it it's it's so smooth, like it just kind of enters with zero resistance. Yeah. So right now I'm just getting. Yeah. Again, it's it's hard to just say. Like citrus. this is very textured, and this is just so smooth. Totally, totally. And and this feels like a candied lemon peel. Like that's that's my impression so far it's like a like a like a, a lemon yeah. drop yeah like a sort of a sweet I can lemon see that because it's not like a fresh it, but but I think you get that when you use actual like lemon extract or lemon rind it's not as like bright like eau de cologne kind of citrusy it's so smooth it's, it's like a lemon peel and it's a little more like muted it's it, when you actually use the the peel it's like a it's like a flatter kind of it's lemon. very yellow yeah it's yeah. more yellow than white yeah I suspect that'll burn off, and then and then the gardenia will emerge. Let me let's hunch. take a look at the notes: gardenia, bergamot, and lemon. Lemon accords from 1920. Olibanum absolute. The heart: indolic gardenia accord. Vintage oils of cinnamon, nutmeg, and rosemary. See, I'm not getting any of those spices. Cinnamon, yeah. nutmeg, rosemary are are all very. Yeah, noticeable spices. And you would think they you are would smell hard. them yeah. right away. And there's like they're not even on the horizon. Yeah. And this is very soapy. Like I got none of that in the beginning, and, and it's interesting. Like it's possible they'll emerge. Yeah, absolutely. But that's really unusual what? to me because like, how do you bury something that deep and not let it show at the beginning? Right. Like even if it like slowly opens and it gets stronger, but I get in, none of that hint at the beginning. It's so something that seems really from. citrusy. It's a very citrusy yeah, top. Yeah. Yeah. Citrusy, soapy, citrus, almost like a citronella. To be honest, it's it's um, yeah, like Abi Rouge, yeah. right? Do you get that that yeah. geranium? Yeah, it, I'm getting a bit of a floral sense, but I'm still getting a really a um a a lemon peel, you know, kind of idea. So let me read the base. So the base, like this is interesting because saffron, fossil amber from 1920, Indonesia dark patchouli, black ambergris, myrrh, tonka, sandal floral blend from 1950, Thai organic oud from a 30-year-old tree, infused with smoke of sinking Indonesian Malinu agar wood chips. Yeah. So if it's sinking oud, then it means it's of a certain density and has enough oil in it that it actually sinks. So it's a certain grade. It's one of the ways they grade the. So wood it chips. sounds like a very deep base. Yeah. Like a a very heavy base. But none of that. Very oriental at the beginning. And this to me, it smells very fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Like I get yellow and white. Yeah. Like a dark mustard yellow and white. A very citrusy and soapy is is yeah. is the main accords I get. I don't get like I don't see any of these dark notes. And again, these aren't like criticisms to say that they're no. This not is what good. I see. Yeah, it's just that, and so sometimes it's just like I don't know if the name makes sense, or I'm curious to see how this is going to develop. That that's in there because that all sounds exciting, but but I don't. And I don't smell gardenia. And I'm liking what I'm smelling. Do but you smell those... gardenia? I'm mostly just getting again a citrus hint of a white floral. We can come back to it. Let's mm. move on to Santal Galore. You want to spray that? Okay, sure. Yeah, so I'm curious about um, sandalwood because I I don't know. I think there are different varieties, and so they have different. So it's very 
This yeah, this is also very, very dark. clear. Oh no, uh, this on one's your skin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This one's also dark. <laughs> yeah, that's left. The, the other one you can see is left a brown. I've kind of run out of room. Yeah, yeah that that's left why I only did stain. It left a pea yeah. stain. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I smell soy sauce. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm getting soy sauce. Yeah, definitely like a sushi soy sauce. I don't know. I'm getting a lot of smoked charred woods. Hmm. Yeah, I get like, this to me is funky, but like, um, no, it's, it's fermented. This is it's... definitely interesting. Yeah, it's almost again sour is not quite the right word, but it's I, this smells like I don't know soy sauce, like like meaning it's aged and it's fermented and it's smoky and it's salty. very smoke. It smells like like a smokehouse. Yeah, almost like you know when you get like those like um, like liquid smoke, like dry meat in a smokehouse. Yeah, yeah. Salty. Do you get salt? Did you just say yeah, salty? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get the because like, I get like the salty soy, soy, soy right? Like yeah. it's fermented, salty, black, inky. Like, it doesn't smell like soy sauce to me, but I get that saltiness. The impression of, like, a blackness and a saltiness. And um, Now, being like called Santal, like, I, yeah. when I wear something sandalwoody, I, I usually get creamy, warm, and fruity nuances. Yeah. And to me, like, creaminess so far, isn't yeah. even on the horizon yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, my, but like my, we were saying earlier, I can't remember if it was another wood video, with uh, you know the way sandalwood works is you usually pick it up in the base. Yeah, like it's kind of unless it's the sandalwood layer. fragrance. Like like there are somewhere it's like a lot of the guidelines have the sandalwood base, and then it warms up as it as it dries right. down. You sort right. of get this creamy, powdery sort of thing. Mm. I have some sandalwood fragrances where that's the main accord, and so you smell oh, it you right away. Sandal, right. But those are more like they'll be kind of nutty and spicy and warm and some of them are like creamy but again nothing nothing like this yeah so interesting so it's sort the of florals like florals are starting to come out on me almost like soapy florals mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i still get the spices and the saltiness yeah i definitely i i don't know and i'm getting this really interesting sauce. texture Truly, maybe it has like a dank, heavy, wet patchouli-ish kind of vibe. Yeah, I think I think we're like struggling for the actual notes the or terminology. Chords, yeah, but it's like the impression or the feeling of like what this is, like whether it's the colors, the textures, the movements. Like, I mean, this is very brown and earthy. Yeah, like my more my first thought was soy sauce, like meaning like a blackish brown, salty, smoky sort of thing yeah okay so santal galore almost like i wouldn't say glue but like almost industrial slightly like malaysian musong king my eyes are really bad durian and indonesian sandalwood is that durian right there uh king durian okay yeah so uh, durian do you have you eaten durian no uh okay so durian's uh... is that like soy sauce no, durian's durian's a fruit. It's a really weird, spiky thing, and it has like um, sort of this like mushy, um, marshmallowy textured um, yellow insides, and it smells like a cross between like garlic and how do I describe it? It's it's like anyone who knows durian, you guys will be knowing exactly what we're talking about. It's it's famous because it stinks, but it's really sweet and juicy. Mm. But people love or hate the taste, and the smell is so strong that in most of Asia, you're not allowed to eat it in public. And there'll be signs on like streetcars or buses or any public thing that says no durian allowed. Oh wow! Like it reeks for like I'm not kidding. Like it, my girlfriend and I were in uh, Vietnam and we bought some in the supermarket and we were sitting on the corner and people would like cross the other side of the street to get away from us. We we're just sitting on the curb eating it, but it reeks, and it's it, but it's delicious if you like it otherwise it's disgusting. it reminds me of when poison was banned in paris restaurants yeah yeah for just like overtaking the room so yeah durian is fascinating like well i'll 
go to an Asian supermarket and we'll get some because it's just you just have to try it even if you all right it. so in the heart you got Turkish yeah. rose water rose accord jasmine osmanthus ancient Indonesian sandalwood root smoked extracted by Russian Adam base notes deer musk tincture oak moss tonka cassia accord clove old mice mice or sandalwood absolute Made by Russian Adam. I mean, the list of ingredients is impressive. Well, not just because who puts durian in a fragrance, mm. but um, but I mean, the, the list of what's in here, like it, it, that Russian Adam himself has extracted some of the stuff, that it's like sinking grade of oud, that it's actual like tinctures with these different musks. Like, it's an impressive list. I, I'm not sure I'm getting all of that at once, but I'm also thinking these things probably just take time to open and develop and go places. Mm. So I'm intrigued to sort of see where they go. Um, but I guess just as first impressions, like, I like the first one. I like the uh, Agar, uh, Agar Noir, um, but it reminds me of like a smoldering spice. Agar Noir is like. actually warmed up and it's 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 much nicer than it, it's, it started to. I mean, it didn't. It wasn't ever nasty, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's just getting nicer. Yeah, I'm getting yeah, just dry spices. I I, I like that kind of thing. But I'm in love with queer de Russi, to be honest. Yeah, like yeah. I love it. I, I could see why you would like that, but again, I don't know why it's called queer de Russi, but but as a fragrance, I could see why you would like that because it's sort of this is this is like this is my comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. You know, old florals, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. green. Uh, it's got like a leathery smoothness more than a birch tar, like a raspy birch. It's not yeah. a butch leather at all. Yeah, it's not it's sharp. It's very soft, subtle, warm, slightly green. Very well blended. Like Yeah, I was going to say like these 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 feel like smooth transitions, like they're interesting stories that are unfolding here in layers. So I think it's like it's interesting to see the textures that that shift and move there's something interesting in the sandalwood i i can't quite pick, pick it out yeah the second one um i'm not that excited about the musk lab no um, it's it, it, it hasn't it, seemed it to have gone anywhere kind of flat to be yeah honest. exactly it seems to have just not really gone anywhere and it's not something I like. The first one I want to keep smelling. I want to I want to yeah. see where this goes. I want to keep smelling this. The second one I'm just sort of bored, and that's that. Um, yeah, this creator is. I I know why you like it. I, I I totally get it. I just get I get indoles. I get a certain freshness to the florals. There's a green bitterness in there. Yeah, yeah. It smells like fragrances they don't make anymore. You know. And all I can smell is freaking soy sauce. I just get soy sauce from this. The gardenia is nice <laughs> as well. It's changed. Gardenia. It's, it's yeah, it nicer it? than just the lemon mint. It's more floral now. More very very smooth florals, like warm sunny florals. Mm. I think the spray version actually makes sense here. I I, I think these things, um, if they were just dabbers, it'd be a lot harder to get into them, and even to apply. I think you just wouldn't get. Um, yeah, you just couldn't let them open properly and, and get into them. Yeah. And this, uh, yeah, the last one, I'm still figuring it out. The Santal Galore. Still figuring out where that's going. Not so sure. But again, I'm not sure if this is one where it's like a bit of a brutal, weird mm. opening. Mm. And it's like it needs to get to its story. But it's actually like just a weird, funky opening that wasn't meant to be like that i'm not sure i feel like i'm losing something in this the, like in the translation i've got too much going on yeah i also get hints of the other one while wearing like i'll sniff the one and i'm getting hints of the other that, that are coming up like queer to see makes the most sense to me yeah and and uh Gar noir is 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 my home base yeah yeah but it's it's dusty dry spices but I smell something like Amber Absolute or, you know, or um, maybe, maybe the I, I, you know, I feel, I get the texture from the Amber Absolute, but the smells are just so completely different to me. me. Okay. Yeah, to me, I just get a mix of spices and, and Amber. So that Agar Noir is your favorite? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, um, 
Yeah, Santel. I I suspect it's going to go somewhere, but right now I just don't really get where what it's where it's at. But I I think it's just a weird opening to get somewhere, because I can't imagine this was planned. Gardenia is just so fresh and smooth and almost like you know, kind of dainty. It's not something I would ex like expect. This is what a rige does. Something yeah. so delicate, floral. Bergamo and lemon accords, so that makes sense. It's In got this kind of like this solar. Indolic gardenia, circa nineteen twenty. Vintage oils of cinnamon, nutmeg, and rosemary. Um, but you know that he's nodding to nineteen twenty, you know, circa. So, I guess it's meant to be really a throwback. Fossil amber oil, saffron, yeah, and then the whole the whole base. Yeah, I think we said we don't smell any of that uh, right now. Or, you know, Thai oud from a thirty year old tree. Uh, if you use the smoke of sinking Indonesian agarwood ships, yeah, myrrh, tonka, yeah. So I'm, you got to keep in mind that. these are just first impressions. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, these could very easily change. Yeah, I'm curious to see where these go. Um, I think they're worth sniffing out. Um, if if this sort of style or impression, you know, right, is of interest. Um, but yeah, it's it's a mixed sort of set. I I think. Um, I think there's different experiences for different people, like in here. I like the Critter um, Sea a lot. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. Nice. All right, there you go. If you have smelled Arige Lador's newest collection, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Love reading your comments as always. Uh, give Daniel a welcome and uh, ask him to come back sometime. Other than that, we'll see you all again very soon.